Welcome back to the Simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the surface and screen GUI for the pet index system. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new Roblox development video. I also have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. So, hop into regularly in the studio. The first thing we want to do is actually set up our pet index model. If you guys have followed this tutorial from the start and did everything Thing exactly as I did, then inside of your workspace, you should have a model called Pet Index. Now, if you don't actually have this model, you can get it for completely free from this Patreon post, and there's a link to this in the description down below. So, with this Pet Index, we are actually going to go ahead and move it over into our spawn area, and now we can take it and place it wherever we want to, and I'm just going to put it right over here, and I think that looks pretty good. Now, we're going to go through and make some changes with this specific model. Now, if you get the Pet Index from the Patreon post today, the model is actually updated with all the changes that we're making in that Patreon post. So, if you just just downloaded the model and added it to your game, you can skip to the next chapter. To start making changes, we're going to open up the model. Inside of here, we actually have a part called Surface GUI Part, and we're actually going to rename this to Display. Now, additionally, we actually want to modify the material of the specific part as well, because currently it's neon, and we can see a cool looking white glow from it. The issue with this, though, is that when we actually add a Surface GUI to this specific part, the glow will make our GUI look very bad. So, I'm going to change this from neon to actually smooth plastic, and now we just have sort of a white screen. Additionally, inside of this part, we actually have a Surface GUI here. We're going to go ahead and delete that. Next, what we want to do is add a part inside of this model. We're going to rename this to Hitbox. What we can then do is actually grab the orientation from one of our other parts. So we're going to go ahead, copy and paste that right there. So now our parts orientation is exactly the same as all the others. Then what we're going to do is actually just resize this part. And basically we want to put this Hitbox all around the part. So we'd rather extend this a little bit further than the actual model rather than it being too small and stopping right there. The reason that we're doing this is because with this part, we're actually going to be using this part to detect if a player walks into the radius of the pet index and if the GUI should be displayed. Now that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm then going to do is set the transparency of this part to one. Now that we set the transparency of that, what we're then going to do is select all of these parts right here. We then want to set the anchor property on all of them to true. And you can decide how you want to do the collisions, but specifically for the hitbox part, we actually want to make sure that we set can collide to false. The reason being is because this is just an invisible part that we're using to listen for whenever the player gets close enough and when we should display the GUI. So we don't actually want it to prevent the player's movement at all. Now that we've done that we can select the actual model itself and we want to set the primary part to the hitbox right there now that we've done that we are all good with the model next what we'll begin doing is actually creating the service gui so what we're going to do is go inside of the star gui add a brand new screen gui to this we're then going to rename the screen gui to pet index for the properties we're going to set reset on spawn to false then inside of the pet index we actually want to add a brand new service gui and we're going to rename this to template for the properties of the service gui we want to set reset on spawn to false we can then go ahead and set the adorny property so we're going to go ahead click on that and then we're going to go inside of our workspace, inside of the pet index, and we want to set the Adorni property to the display part just like that. Now that we set that up, we can't actually see anything really displayed on this part. So what we're going to do is add a frame inside of here, and then we're going to resize this frame a little bit. And we're going to set the size to one scaled on both the X and the Y. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and actually just mess around with the background color so that we could see our GUI because the part's white, we wouldn't actually be able to see the frame. But now you might be thinking, we're not able to actually see the GUI at all. The reason for that is because we want to go back to the surface GUI and we want to modify the face property. Now we're basically going to cycle through all these different options until we see our frame. And now that we've set the property to the left, we can actually see that this part becomes black. So that means that the correct face would be the left side. Another thing that I like to do is set the light influence to zero so the surface GUI is not actually influenced by light at all. And we can also set the brightness to zero as well. And now that we've done that, we can really start working on creating this GUI. So with this frame, we're going to set the background transparency to one so that we no longer see that. Then inside of the frame, we're going to add a brand new text label. Now we're going to rename this text label to title. For the background transparency, we're going to set that to one because we don't want there to be any background. For the text, we're actually going to say pet index. We want to keep the text color black. We want to set the text scale to true. For the font, we're of course going to go with a Gotham and we will make that bold as well. We then want to update the size of this and on the X scale, we're going to set that to one and on the Y scale, we're going to set that to point one. Now for the position of this, we want to move this down slightly on the Y axis. So for the anchor point on the Y, we're going to set that to point one and on the Y scale, we're also going to set that to point one as well. Now again, with this black outline around our text label, the reason that that's actually happening is because we have this text label selected. So if we unselect it, we no longer see that black border around our text label. I'm not sure if that's a glitch or if that's something new that Roblox added. It seemed really, really weird to me when I was working on the service GUI and I was so confused as to why that was happening. But anyway, that's why it is happening. So you don't actually have to worry about it. It's just a visual thing for when you have it selected. Next, what we're going to do is throw a viewport frame inside of this frame. Now for the size of this, we're going to set that to 0.5 on both the X and the Y scaled. And then for the position, we're going to center this on the X. And then for the Y, we're actually going to set that to 0.4. So we want to make it slightly higher up than we would if we 
we are centering it on the Y as well. So on the X scale, we're going to say 0.5 and on the Y scale, we're going to say 0.4. And now that looks perfect. The final thing that we want to do with this viewport frame is actually set the background transparency to one, but actually we're going to set that to 0.5 right now so that we can still actually see the viewport frame and we can easily line up our text labels according to the viewport frame. So what we're then going to do is duplicate the title text label. We're going to rename this to progress. For the text, we're going to say something like 999 slash 999. Now for the position of this on the Y axis, we're going to set the anchor point to 0.8 and the Y scale to 0.8 as well, just like that. Then what we're going to do is duplicate this text label once again, and we're going to rename this to percent. Now for the text of this, we're going to say something like 100%. And then we want to position this slightly below our progress text label. So we're going to say 0.9 for the Y on the position and the anchor point. And now if we take a look at it, that looks pretty good. For the viewport frame, we want to go back to here and set the background transparency of this to one so that there is no background to it. So now we're pretty much done with creating this actual GUI. What we can then do is close all those objects in our Explorer. Additionally, you might be wondering why this service GUI is actually called template. The reason for that is because we can actually have multiple pet index models in our game and we want to put the service GUI on all of those models spread throughout the game no matter where they're at. And the way that we're going to be doing that is by actually duplicating the service GUI template and creating an individual service GUI for each of the individual pet indexes. So that's why we're naming this template. And also, obviously, you don't have to add the pet index here as well. I'm just doing this to show you that we're actually going to be setting this up to work with unlimited amount of pet index models in your game. Now, with that being said, what we can then start working on is the actual screen GUI of the pet index. So inside of our pet index screen GUI, we're going to add a frame inside of here. Now, for the size of the frame, we're going to set that to 0.4 on the X scaled and 0.5 on the Y scale. And then we're going to center this in the middle of our screen. So 0.5 for both the X and the Y. We can then modify the background color three property, and we're going to set that to like a darker blue. We can then go inside of our template, inside of our frame, and grab this title text label right here, just because it has all the properties of our normal text labels anyway. So it speeds this up a little bit. And then we're going to paste that inside of the frame, and we're going to leave the name as still title. What we do want to change about this text label, though, is we actually want to set the text of this. And instead of saying pet index, we're just going to say index. Additionally, for the text color, we want to make that a white. For the size of this, rather than stretching the entire width, we're actually going to set the X scale to 0.5. Now that we've done that, we want to make sure that we center this on the X axis. So we're going to set the anchor point to 0.5 on the X, and we're going to do the same for the position as well. Now for the position on the Y scale, we actually want to set this to something like 0 0.025. It all depends on how far you want this text label to appear from the top of the GUI. So what we're then going to do is throw a frame inside of here, and we're going to rename this to container BG. BG is short for background. Now with this frame, we actually want to set the background color of this to a lighter blue, and then we can go ahead and start modifying the size of this. Now for the size on the X scale, we're going to set this to 0.983. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.828, just like that. For the position, we want to make sure that this is centered on the X axis. So we're going to center it just like that. And now for the position on the Y axis, we want this to appear just a tad bit from the very bottom of the frame. So we're actually going to set the Y scale to 0.15. And now that looks pretty good. You of course can make your own changes. If you want this to be a little bit larger, closer to the edges or anything else like that, feel free to make those on your own. Next, what we're going to do is duplicate the title text label. And we're going to rename this to total. Now for the text, we want to say something like total pets, semicolon 999 slash 999. Now with the text label, we basically want to resize it and reposition it to be just above the container background. Now I'm going to be a little bit more precise with the sizing. So on the Y scale, I'm going to set this to 0 0.05. That just makes it slightly smaller. And then for the position, at least on the Y scale, I want to adjust this so that it appears just a tad bit higher up on the frame. So for the Y, we're actually going to set this to 0 0.075. So now it appears just a tiny bit higher than the actual background. Additionally, with this text label, we probably want to set the text X alignment to the left so that all the text appears towards the left. Next, what we're going to do is add a text button to the frame as well. We're going to rename this to exit. For the background color, we're going to go with that nice little red. And then for the text, we're going to set this to an X. For the text color, we're going to set this to a white. We're going to make sure that the text is scaled. For the font, we're of course going to go with that Gotham and we're going to make sure that that is bold. And now we need to resize this. So on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0 0.058. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.104. Now that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and position this towards the right side of the GUI. And now I think that positioning looks good. So if you are curious about the positioning, this is the positioning right here. Then inside of this frame, we want to add a scrolling frame to this. We're going to rename this to container. For the background transparency, we can actually set that to one. For the scroll bar thickness, we can set this to something like six or maybe a little bit bigger. It all depends on your preference. And then for the scroll bar image color, we're going to set this all the way up to a white. We want to set the border size pixel to zero to remove that little black line that we had there. And now we can start resizing this a little bit. For the X scale, I'm going to set this to 0 0.969. And on the Y scale, I'm going to set this to 0 0.6. Now that we've done that on the X axis, I want to center that. So we're going to set that to 0 0.5 on the X scale. And now that's centered on the X axis. For the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.15. Now this is looking pretty
pretty good. And we have a small little space below the container where we're going to actually add another frame to this. So what we're going to do is duplicate the container background and we're going to rename this frame to extra. Now for the background color of this frame, we want to set to this darkish blue that we have on the outside. And then we want to resize this. So for the X, I'm going to keep that exactly the same. But for the Y, we actually want to set this to 0.207. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and adjust the Y scale position. And we want to set this to 0.764. Now that we've done that, the extra frame appears just slightly above the container background frame. And we want to adjust the size on the X axis here. Instead of being 0.983, we actually want to say 973. So that's just slightly smaller. And now that we've done that, we can clearly see that this extra frame is meant to be contained with inside of the container background. So it gives it a nice little look. Now that we've created that extra frame, we're actually going to start working on this first. So inside of this frame, we actually want to duplicate the container frame and drag that inside of the extra frame. Now for the position of this, we actually want to center this perfectly. So we're going to set that to 0.5 on all of the anchor point and all the position scales. Now that we've done that, we can see that is centered perfectly on the extra frame. Depending on what you think about this, you might want to adjust the sizing of this a little bit as well. On the X scale, we're going to go with 0.995 and on the Y scale, we're going to go with 0.92. And now I think that looks good. This frame clearly looks like it's surrounded by this border right here. So I like that. And we're also going to rename this from container background to just BG, or you could say background because of course that's what BG stands for. What we're then going to do is duplicate the title text label, drag that inside of the extra frame. Let's go ahead and resize this on the Y scale. We actually want to set this to 0.3 instead of 0.1. So that makes it a little bit larger for the text of this. We actually want to say get extra pets equipped exclamation mark. And now we also want to move this text label slightly down as well. So on the Y scale of the position, we're going to set this to 0.105. Then what we're going to do is duplicate the BG frame. We're going to rename this to progress bar for the background color of this. We want to set this to the darker blue. Then for the size of this on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.7 and on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.312. Now for the anchor point on the Y, we actually want to set that to zero because we still want this to be centered on the X axis. And now that looks pretty good. What we're then going to do is duplicate the progress bar and put it inside of itself. And we're going to rename this from progress bar to progress for the background color of this. We actually want to make it a little bit of a yellow. So something like that. Then for the size on the X scale, we can set that to like 0.5 and on the Y scale, we want to set that to one. Then for the position, we're going to reset this all back to zero. And now that looks good. What we're then going to do is duplicate the title text label. We're going to rename this to plus one. Now for the text of this, we're going to say plus one pet for the size of this on the X scale. We're going to set that to 0.114. And then we want to position this to the right of our progress bar. So for the position on the X scale, we're going to set this to 0.915. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.5. Now that looks pretty good to make this look even better. What we also want to do is set the text X alignment to left. And now that looks much better. We can then actually duplicate this text label and we're going to rename this to amount. Now for the text, we're actually going to say 999 slash 999 space. And then in parentheses, 100% just like that. Now we want to increase the size of this slightly on the X scale. So we're actually going to set this to 0.138. And then we want to position this on the left side of the progress bar. So for the X scale position, we're going to set this to 0.07. And now that's appearing on the left side of the progress bar. Additionally, we want to change the text X alignment to be on the right this time, since the text label is on the left side. And now that we look at the text label, that looks pretty good. What we're then also going to do is duplicate the amount text label and drag that inside of the progress bar frame. We're actually going to keep the text the exact same, but we also want to center this. So we're going to set the anchor point to 0.5 and then both the X and the Y scale scale to 0.5 as well for the position. Now for the text X alignment, we actually want to set that back to center. Now for the size of this, we're going to set that to 0.5 on the X scale and 0.6 on the Y scale. And now that looks pretty good. What we can then start doing is actually adding UI strokes to most of our text labels. So we're going to throw a UI stroke inside of here. For the color, we actually want to make it this dark blue. So we're going to go ahead and grab that color. For the thickness, I think a number between two and three is pretty good. So if we look at two, that's pretty nice. If we look at three, that might be too large for some people. 2.5 might be a good middle ground. And you of course can decide what you want. We're going to go with two 2.5. So we can then go ahead, copy that UI stroke and put that inside of the amount text label, as well as the plus one text label and the title text label as well. Now you will also might want to add this to the progress bar as well. So we're going to throw that inside of there. And I think I'm going to change the thickness of this to two. So that's just slightly smaller than it is on all those text labels. Now, additionally with this, we might want to make the background color just a slightly different color because it's the exact same color as our strokes. So we're going to go with just a slightly lighter blue. And now that looks pretty perfect. Since we've added the UI strokes to all these, we can also throw a UI corner inside of here as well to round all the corners out of everything. So inside of the progress bar, the UI corner, we're going to set the corner radius to 0.5. And now that's very nicely rounded. We're going to duplicate this and then drag that inside of the progress frame. And now that's rounded nicely as well, still at 0.5. We can throw a UI corner inside of BG as well. For the corner radius of this, we're going to set that to 0.125. And then we can add a UI corner to our extra frame and we're going to set this to 0.1. Now I think that looks pretty good. You of course can make any of the adjustments that you want on your own. And while we're adding the UI corners, we might as well just add it to all the things that we have currently. So we're going to add a 
UI corner to the container background. For the corner radius of this, we're actually going to set this to 0 0.01. We'll then duplicate this, throw this inside of the actual mainframe. And for the corner radius here, we're actually going to set this to 0 0.025. And then we can also throw one inside of the exit button as well. And we're going to set this one to 0 0.1. Now that we've added a corner radius to everything, they all look pretty good. You, of course, can make your own adjustments. What we can then begin working on is the container scrolling frame right here. Inside of here, we're going to throw in a UI grid layout as well as a frame. Now, going back to the UI grid layout, for the cell size on the X scale, we're actually going to set that to 1. And on the Y, we're going to set that to 0 0.1. Now, we actually want to set the horizontal alignment to center so that everything will be centered. And then we're going to rename this frame to template. Then inside of this template frame, we actually want to add another UI grid layout inside of here. We also want to add a viewport frame to this as well. Now, for the UI grid layout inside of the template frame, for the cell size on the X axis, we're going to set that to 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 on the Y scale as well. We can then go back to our viewport frame. We're going to rename this to egg. We're going to set the background color of this to our normal dark blue. And then we're going to duplicate the total text label and drag that inside of our egg viewport frame right here. We're going to keep the name as total, but we're actually going to set this to something like 10 slash 10. Now for the size of this text label on the X axis, we actually want to set this to 0. 0.465. And on the Y axis, we're going to set this to 0. 0.25. Now for the position, we basically want to position this on the top left of the viewport frame. So for the anchor point, we're going to set everything to zero. And then for the position on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0. 0. 0.05. And we're going to do the same for the Y scale as well. So 0. 0.05 for both of them. Now, if we look at the text label, I think that looks pretty good. And I think that's lined up nicely. Going back to the UI grid layout inside of the template, we can actually set the vertical alignment to center and that looks much nicer. And then inside of the egg viewport frame, we're going to go ahead and throw a UI corner inside of here. And for the corner radius, we're going to set that to 0. 0.1. Then what we can do is actually duplicate this egg viewport frame and we're going to rename this to template. Now for the background color of this, we actually want to use a gray color. Now for the total text label, we're going to rename this to rarity. For the text, we're going to say something like common. And then for the size on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.27 on the Y. Now how we're going to go about positioning this on the X axis, we want to center this. So we're going to set that to 0. 0.5 on the anchor point and 0. 0.5 on the X scale position. And then for the Y scale position, we're actually going to set this to 0. 0.7. So now that it's centered horizontally and it appears towards the bottom of the viewport frame, you may also want to actually adjust the text stroke transparency of this text label as well to maybe something like 0.75 and you of course can modify it to make it however you like. Next what we're going to do is duplicate this text label and rename this to locked. For the text of this it's actually just going to be a question mark and for the text color we just want to make this a little bit of a darker gray. Now for both the size and the position we're going to set everything to just 0.5 on all the scales because we want to center this and we want it to be relatively large so that's why we're setting everything to 0.5 just like that. Oh another thing that we need to make sure that we do is for the text x alignment we want to make sure that this is set to center and now that looks pretty good. What we can then do is actually duplicate this template a couple of times to see how it'll look and I think that all looks pretty good but we want to go to the UI grid layout and we want to make sure that we set the cell padding to scale and for the cell padding on the X scale I'm going to set that to 0 0.007 because I think that spacing looks pretty good to me. What we can then do is delete all the extra templates leaving just one then going back to the main template frame what we can then do is set the background transparency of this to one. We can then duplicate this template frame a couple of times just to see how the GUI will actually appear how the spacing is and everything else like that. Then let's go to the UI grid layout and we want to adjust the cell padding for this as well. For the cell padding of this on the X scale, we're going to set that to zero. And on the Y, we're going to set this to 0 0.005. And that padding looks pretty nice to me. So we can then go ahead and delete all the templates except for one. Now we're actually pretty much all done with the container frame. One thing that I actually thought of is inside of the extra frame, we have the background right here. Rather than keeping that as the exact same blue that we use for the container background, we're actually going to make that a slightly lighter blue. And I think that looks much nicer. Then what we're going to do is duplicate the text title label. And then we're going to rename this to tip. For the text, we actually want this to say tip semicolon you can trade for pets to complete your index exclamation mark now we can go ahead and resize this on the x scale we're going to set that to 0.8 and on the y scale we're going to set that to 0 0.05 we then want to position this slightly below the gy so we're going to set the position to 1.01 .01. And now that appears directly below the GUI. Inside of this text label, we're going to go ahead and throw in a UI stroke. We're, of course, going to use that darker blue. And we're going to set this to about a 2.5. And I think that looks great. Although I'm not sure how I forgot the exclamation mark right there. But now that looks pretty perfect. So with all that being said, we can go to the test tab, click on devices, and see how this looks on mobile. Now you might be thinking, whoa, that stroke looks insane. It does not look good at all. Unfortunately, with Roblox, they don't scale stroke for all devices. So we actually have to use a library to do that. But we actually have to script that into our game and we'll do that on the next episode. As long as your GUI looks relatively similar to this, then your sizing and positioning all should be set perfectly to the scale so you don't have to worry about any of those things. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll of course get to scripting the entire pet index system. Now, as always, if you guys enjoyed the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new Roblox development content. Additionally, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and get access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.